Well, our form the past few weeks has been pretty good. We've had a couple of very nice wins, a tough loss. We're coming up to the end of the year, and we are clinging, and clinging is the correct word, to fourth place in League One. There's a gap between us and the top three teams, though. So it looks like four through six, the rest of the season is going to be a dogfight. And if that wasn't bad enough, I got a bunch of teams coming after a bunch of my players. So the January transfer window could be interesting. My name's FM Jellico, and this is the Return of Glory with SC Bastia, episode 62. Well, after those back-to-back -back losses at uh, Leon and Arsenal, in which we were shut out in both of those games, 2-0, we needed a win, so I played my strongest side against the worst team in League One. They responded with a 2-0 victory. Zadis, a 43rd-minute penalty kick. Frank, a goal in the 72nd minute. We were then away at OGC Nice. This was a tough, tough draw. One all. Armand had a goal in the 56th minute. This was a pretty even game. Nice had two woodwork hits, one of which probably should have gone in. We definitely had our chances this match. Let me swap this out for the Bosti stats here. We just... <sighs> We just couldn't put it together up top. Um, Marin is out four to six weeks, or was out four to six weeks. He's coming back from injury. And Luke Foster's been back up top as striker. And he has been very hot and cold, which I'm, I haven't quite figured out. It's not like he's not gotten a lot of playing time. And he's got a new contract this year, too. You know, I like him. I'd like to hold on to him. But he just, he's been very hit and miss lately. We're then away at Troyes, who are currently in 7th place. I want to say they're in the fight for European football. And we lost 2-1. Foster goal in the 50th minute. We just, we had our chances this game. We absolutely missed them. We had 9 shots, 5 on target. We played the counterattacking game all game. Troyes had a lot of shots, but as you can see, half of them were outside the box. I am more than willing to give those up any day of the week and twice on Sunday. You know, if I'm holding teams to, to low percentage shots like that, I am more than happy. But we had too many players with too many subpar performances this match. They just really held us back. And uh, the fact that Zadis missed a penalty kick in the 21st minute, too, just... That was a gut-wrencher. We were then home against Cluj in our Euro Cup game, and we beat them 3-1 thanks to goals by Sousa Foster and an extra-time goal by Sotavia that was... I swear, the players were walking off the field when he scored. That's what it felt like. And then we were also home against Lille, and we won uh, thanks to an Amaralda own goal off the opening kickoff. I'm still trying to figure out how that happened. Then Lyle Foster had a brace. So, as you can see, he's had four goals in six games for us. It's just that in the three games he didn't score, he was pretty well unnoticeable, you know? And that's that's a problem. Um you want him to be contributing more often than not. In the last five games, as you can see here, you know, he came in against Nancy, he had a 6-8. He was in against Nice, had a 6-4, then an 8-3, 7-2, and an 8-8. And there's just, there's a lot of that going on when he plays. He's either average. It seems to me he's either average or just, he has flashes. And I don't know if it's because he's not the full-time starter anymore with Marin being on board. But he's had his opportunity the past couple weeks to, to show what he can do, and he's shown it really well to the point that, well, at one point in time, he had a couple team, teams in England after him, but I guess that's kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, unfortunately, six of my starting 11 are wanted by other by other teams now. Ken Wilson's wanted, Jonathan Ponzo's wanted, Andre Sotovia, Alfonso Souza, Antoine Bernade, Armand No is wanted. Um... You know, a couple of my youth players are wanted. Uh, Saad Nasri is wanted on loan. It's it's going to be interesting. The other thing that's going to be interesting this transfer window as well is how many teams are going to come after Bastion Pichon and Regis Valle. They have been on my under 16 or my under 19 squad. Pichon has 17 goals in 23 games. Valle has 11 goals in 15 games. And Pichon was the one that PSG was after in the summer transfer window. They offered up the words of 12 million, 12 million euros for him. Now, I've got him signed on a long-term contract. He is going to be here to see it out unless I just absolutely get blown away. But there is a good possibility he's going to see first-team playing time next year. I mean, just, he is this good this early. 
you know, his technicals have to improve, but his mentals are solid where they count. You know, and the physicals are already just they're they're fabulous. So I'm, I may have to figure out a way to uh, get a pressing forward into my formation somehow. And then Valet is in much the same mold. He's not as physically gifted or as mentally talented as uh, Pichon, but they are very, very similar. Uh, Pichon is a bit more physical, has more speed, has more vision. Valet is better on the um, aerial side of things, but they will probably both end up being fairly equal players. So that, that means I'm going to be looking for a two-striker formation, which means possibly getting away from the wingers. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. Today, though, it is all about OGC Nice in the Kudali fourth round, and then we're going to be home against Amiens as well. Uh, the winter break is coming up. We've got a friendly against Hanover, which they actually suggested. Uh, we're making a little bit of money off of that. And then we're probably going to come back for the PSG game and then have her as well. PSG is going to be the last day of the January transfer window. We should have all our moves out of the way then. And then uh, we're playing real Hispalis again in the Euro Cup. So, I don't know, maybe we'll skip all these games and come back for the home and away at Real Hispalis. They knocked us out last year, and we had a really good chance of beating them. Uh, a bit of revenge would be, would be very, very nice. So, that said, I'm going to uh, go check the best 11, set the reserves, and we're going to come back with our match against OGC Nice in the Coup League fourth round in just a bit. Well, we are away at Nice today, and we are playing our 4-1-2-3. Ramirez in goal, Salibi, Ponzo, Cristiano, and Wilson as the defensive back four. Soldevia behind Bernadette and Sousa. Frank and Armand up top of the attacking midfielders. And Foster as the striker. They are playing a 4-4-2. Well, February ended up in Nice. Okay. We're also coming off a run of games that saw us play like four. Five games in 18 days or 20 days. I mean, it was a ridiculous stretch of games. We had a game every three days, it seemed. And especially against Troy, as you could tell, the guys were tired. Um, you know, I cut back. I, I cut back. Oh, Bourgeois. Skies over the crossbar. We dodged a bullet there. I cut back on the training quite a bit. I mean, we've been practicing set pieces and things like that. But, you know, instead of the three sessions a day, for most of the training periods, it's been two sessions or even one session with Makar, and ah, they did it. They missed the first time with Bourgeois. They didn't miss the second time with Makar. Makar Malacher. I'm totally mispronouncing his name. It's, it's Malacher. Nice long cross in by Borgna. Bourgeois. Come on, guys. Well, other than those two highlighted, it it's been a very quiet first half. We've had more shots than Nice, but none of them have, have been shown. And we're going into the game down a goal, thanks to that very nice Malakar goal off the cross. And it, it could very well be 2-0 as well. But we've been the better team in terms of possession and things like that. We just we haven't put anything together yet. So I'm going to yell at the boys. We'll get this game underway. Lopez with the ball. To Toussart, back to Lopez, back to Toussart, taps it up to Bourgeois, back to Toussart, out into space for Mendel. He's going to cross it in. Iglesias is there, and he puts it far post. That is not good, fellas. Come on. Oh, he kept running, and Wilson let him go right by. You know, we're about 60 minutes in. We're going to make a couple changes. we got a couple players that definitely need to come off. Cristiano is not having the best game. So Pierre is going to come on for him. Flores is going to come on for Wilson. We're going to save our last reserve here. Uh, we're going to get Bernade off and bring Comsana on. Santi. Got a couple of tired players out on the pitch. And we're not going to do it. Nice is going to beat us 2-0. That is unfortunate. Well, they're calling that a Ponzo own goal. I totally missed that. Well, time to yell at the boys again. And we got 540, 548, 584,000 euros for that loss. 
But I told the board we did the quarterfinal and we didn't. We were short again. League wise, before we get to the Amiens game, as I as you can see, we are three points ahead of Monaco in fourth place. But Leon is eight points ahead of us. Marseille is twelve points ahead of us, and PSG could you know they're what sixteen points ahead of us. It's just. And they still have not lost a game. I think Montpellier is the only team. Yeah, Montpellier is the only team to uh, have not lost to PSG this year. They drew. Frank still leads us with 12 goals. Kane Wilson has the highest rating at the moment. Lucien Marin, six assists still. Frank, Kane Wilson, Alfonso Sousa, all with three players in the match. Eh, Bernade has nine yellow cards. Uh, the 19 matches we have played, it's the halfway point of the season. Our 32 goals are fifth highest. Our 20th goals allowed are fifth best. We're third highest in yellow cards. No red cards yet, though, but it's only halfway through the season. So, that was a disappointing coup de league loss. Um, I'm going to do the press conference, and then we're going to come back in three days? Three days for the Amiens game. Fun times. Fun, fun times. Now, the good news is nothing major happened during the three days leading up to this game. So, we are going to uh, set the best 11 and come back in just a bit. Well, again, we are playing our 4-1-2-3, but it is a pretty rotated side defensive-wise. Uh, Ramirez in goal, Pierre, Ponzo, Cristiano, and Wilson as the defensive back four. Gajakadiev, Mateus, and Komsanya as the midfielders, with uh, Gajakadiev as the defensive midfielder, respectively. Zadis and No as the attack midfielders, and Foster up top as the striker. Well, Foster's about the worst match fit on the team. Is it 90%? So... Um, with Marin being out, that means Frank's his backup, which is why Zadis is playing the attacking on the left. But Amiens is solidly mid-table. They're 13th place, so I think we should be okay. Wilson sends it in. No. To Ponzo. Bounces around. Foster slots it past the keeper. Looks like the keeper there lost track of the ball. No heads it down. Ponzo takes the shot. And then Foster just wasn't exactly the strongest hit by any stretch of the imagination, but it counts. We're off to a good start. Here's the kicker. Monaco, Leon, and PSG all have games in hand. I mean, Leon is five games ahead of us with two games in hand, which means they could conceivably be... Or five points, rather. Could conceivably be eight points ahead of us when they get caught up. Or six, assuming they win both. But I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Quiet first half. Ten shots, six on target for us. Amion, just one shot, none on target. We are firmly in control of this game. As long as we stay healthy, we should have it in hand. Yeah, the dogfight looks like it's going to be for fifth through tenth. Or maybe even fourth through tenth, assuming, you know, Monaco... You know, I would think Monaco will get four points for the next two games. And I say that not knowing who Monaco is going to be playing. So we'll have to wait and see. Now, Kane Wilson got injured. Gash leg. So we're going to bring uh, Mattis Flores on. We're also going to get Foster off and bring on Frank. Five minutes left. Can we hold on to the 1-0 lead? And again, another quiet game. Lasamba drives forward for knees. Mateus fouls him. He's already on a yellow. Oh, look. He's been booked. We might want to tell him to ease off tackles. Unreal. Taylor... Did Ramirez save that? He did. Bounces off the post, bounces off Ramirez, and stays on the right side of the line for us. Oh, that was dangerous. Ronaldo almost scored an own goal. Ramirez lumps it forward. Vidal is there for Amiens. He sends it up to La Samba. This is our last gasp. Passes up into space. Now knocked away by Flores. Zadas heads it up. Vidal gets it back. Back to La Samba. Sends it in again. Knocked away. Flores sends it out of bounds. Should be the game here shortly. We're almost 95 minutes into a 94-minute long game. There we go. Good grief. That was a nail-biter. 
That was a lot more nail-biting than it should have been. A Foster fourth-minute goal sees us through on the 1-0 victory. That was not a very exciting game to watch. I'm sorry. I mean, we had 17 shots, 9 on target. We saw all of three of them. It took less than five minutes for that to go through. That's just... Uh, it's a good thing we started going to double live comps. These games have been getting shorter and shorter. I mean, granted, I'm playing on key highlights because extended highlights would mean, you know, just really long episodes. And I just, I don't want to do that. But still. Ponzo, a player of the match with the assist and the defensive performance. And finally, we have a break. Um, you know, in thinking about it, it is a big gap. And we've got Monaco in the French Cup ninth round, but I'm not too worried about the French Cup ninth round. I'm not too worried about the French Cup. I'm more interested in the Euro Cup. So what we're going to do is play through January and then we will do the January transfer roundup and PSG and then come back for the away and home games of, of Real Hasbalas in the Euro Cup. So a not so good performance against Nice and a middling performance against Amiens, but that was enough to see us through. I just, I don't know. It's going to be the transfer window is just going to be a bear given how many guys are wanted. So it's it's conceivable that four or five players could leave. I mean, if I get a good money offer for for a good player, that you know I can then turn around and buy a player of equal to better value. It could be worth it. I just I think this is just this is going to be an interesting transfer window, which kind of fits in with the season because it's been an interesting season so far. So we are in fourth place on 39 points. That could change on blink of an eye, though, as Monaco is six points behind us with two games in hand. So, and it's going to take a lot for us to crawl. It's going to take a lot for us to climb past fourth place. I think fourth through seventh place is going to be our domain this year, unless we just absolutely fall off the rails, which admittedly is entirely possible. So, we will be back at the end of the transfer window and a match against PSG. Hopefully, we can give them their first loss if they haven't lost by then. Not maybe we can keep piling on the misery for them. I doubt it, though. We'll have to wait and see. If you liked what you've seen and heard, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Questions, criticisms, comments, leave those down below. I'll answer them as fast as I can. My name's FM Jellico, and I thank you for watching the Return Our Glory with SC Bastia, Episode 62.